the CA19-9 tumor marker and its role in pancreatic cancer diagnosis and surveillance. Hello, this evidence-based content is prepared by Sabor Khan Fellowship-Trained Consultant Surgeon, and if you or someone you care about has received pancreatic cancer results showing a CA19-9 level, you're probably wondering what those numbers actually mean. I know when you see medical test results especially involving cancer, it's natural to feel anxious and overwhelmed. Today we're going to demystify this commonly used but often misunderstood tumor marker. CA19-9, also called carbohydrate antigen 19-9, is a protein that can be measured in your blood. It's frequently elevated in pancreatic cancer, which is why doctors use it as a tumor marker. But here's the crucial point to understand right from the start. CA19-9 is not a diagnostic test for pancreatic cancer. It's a tool that helps doctors monitor disease activity in response to treatment in patients who already have elevated levels. Let me explain why your doctor won't use CA19-9 alone to diagnose cancer. The sensitivity and specificity for pancreatic cancer range from 70 to 92% and 68 to 92% respectively. Even among symptomatic individuals experiencing epigastric pain, weight loss, or jaundice, the sensitivity, specificity, and positive predictive value of an elevated CA19-9 to above 37 units per milliliter are only approximately 80-85 and 72%. CA19-9 to is frequently elevated in various benign conditions. Bile duct obstruction causing hyperbilirubinemia raises CA19-9 to levels significantly. The marker also elevates in chronic pancreatitis, cholangitis, cholecolithiasis, and other cancers beyond pancreatic cancer. There is a very broad range of CA19-9 levels that can occur in benign disease, and there are no specific cutoff values even beyond 10,000 units per milliliter that are seen only in malignant disease. Here's a limitation that affects an estimated 5-10% to of the population. CA19-9 requires the presence of the Lewis blood group antigen to be expressed. If you have a Lewis negative phenotype, your body simply cannot produce CA19-9, making these levels completely useless as a tumor marker for you, even if you have pancreatic cancer. This genetic limitation means that roughly 1 in 10 to 1 in 20 people will never have elevated CA19-9 levels. Researchers are developing gene tests for FUT3 and FUT2 fucosal transferase enzymes, which influence CA19-9 synthesis, to create individualized reference ranges. When these genetic tests are combined with related markers like DUPAN2, useful for individuals unable to synthesize CA19-9, the sensitivity and specificity for diagnosing stage 1, stage 1 slash 2 resectable pancreatic cancer improves to 78.4 and 97.7% respectively. However, these approaches remain investigational. Now let's talk about what CA19-9 actually does well. Serum levels have considerable value as prognostic markers and as indicators of disease activity in patients with initially elevated levels. The degree of elevation both at initial presentation and in the postoperative setting is associated with long-term prognosis. Among patients who appear to have resectable pancreatic cancer, the magnitude of the preoperative CA19-9 level helps predict the presence of radiographically occult metastatic disease. In a report of 491 patients undergoing staging laparoscopy for radiographically resectable pancreatic adenocarcinoma, CA19-9 values above 130 units per milliliter were a significant predictor of finding radiographically occult, unresectable disease. The rates of unresectable disease among patients with a CA19-9 level is greater than or equal to 130 units per milliliter versus less than 130 units per milliliter were 26 and 11% respectively. While high levels of CA19-9 to help surgeons better select patients for staging laparoscopy, CA19-9 to alone should not be used as an indicator of resectability. Here's where CA19-9 to becomes truly valuable. Serial monitoring of levels once every one to three months is useful to follow patients after potentially curative surgery and for those receiving chemotherapy for advanced disease. Rising CA19-9 to levels usually precede the radiographic appearance of recurrent disease. This early warning system can alert your medical team to problems before they show up on CT scans. For patients who respond to therapy, decreases in CA19-9 to are a gradual process since this tumor marker has an estimated half-life of 15 to 33 days. This means you won't see immediate drops after successful treatment. However, and this is critical confirmation of disease progression should always be pursued with imaging studies or biopsy. CA19-9 to alone is not an optimal substitute for radiographic imaging to assess treatment response. Post-resection CA19-9 to predicts overall survival in patients with pancreatic cancer treated with adjuvant chemoradiation. Failure of normalization of CA19-9 to following resection is tantamount to metastatic disease. An elevated post-treatment CA19-9 to increases the risk for recurrence with the highest risks in those with persistent elevations from diagnosis through follow-up. An important caveat, 
Mild elevations in CA19-9 to can occur with biliary tract dysfunction, which often happens in patients after a pancreaticoduodenectomy. You might wonder, what's a normal CA19-9 to level? The most accurate cutoff value for discriminating pancreatic cancer from benign pancreatic disease is serum concentrations above 37 units per milliliter. But even at this level, sensitivity and specificity for pancreatic cancer are only 77 and 87 percent respectively. The specificity and positive predictive value can be improved by using higher cutoff levels, 100, or even 1,000 units per milliliter, but at the expense of sensitivity. While a 2016 clinical practice guideline from the American Society of Clinical Oncology suggested chemotherapy could be used before surgery for patients with anatomically resectable but high-risk tumors, as judged by elevated CA-19-9 levels, there was no recommendation for a specific cutoff value to select patients for neoadjuvant therapy. The bottom line, your doctor considers trends in CA-19-9 over time and your individual clinical context rather than relying on absolute numbers. If you're having CA-19-9 testing, ask your doctor whether you've been tested for Lewis antigen status. If you're Lewis negative, you and your medical team should know that CA-19-9 won't be useful for monitoring. Keep a personal record of your CA-19-9 levels with dates. Note what imaging was done at the same time and what treatments you were receiving. This creates a visual trend that helps you understand the trajectory. If you notice yellowing of your skin or eyes, report this immediately to your healthcare team. Remember that jaundice itself raises CA-19-9 to levels, potentially confusing the clinical picture. A single elevated CA-19-9 to reading, especially if you're asymptomatic, has extremely limited predictive value. Serial measurements over time provide much more meaningful information. Before your appointment, prepare these questions. What is my baseline CA-19-9 to level, and is it being used for diagnosis or monitoring? How often should my CA-19-9 to be checked given my specific situation? What degree of change in my CA-19-9 to level would prompt you to order imaging or change my treatment? Do I have conditions like bile duct obstruction or pancreatitis that could be affecting my CA-19-9 to independently of cancer? If my CA-19-9 to is rising, what's the plan for confirming disease progression with imaging? If you're caring for a loved one with pancreatic cancer, ask about the frequency of CA-19-9 to monitoring during their follow-up care. Consensus guidelines from the National Comprehensive Cancer Network recommend CA-19-9 to determinations and follow-up CT scans every 3 to 6 months for 2 years, then every 6 to 12 months. Contact your oncology team immediately if you have a known pancreatic cancer diagnosis and your CA-19-9 to has been stable or declining but suddenly begins rising. You develop new symptoms like persistent abdominal pain, unexplained weight loss, or jaundice, even if your CA-19-9 to was previously normal. You're Lewis positive and had an elevated CA-19-9 to that normalized after surgery but is now rising again. This often precedes radiographic evidence of recurrence by weeks to months. After starting chemotherapy for pancreatic cancer, you typically won't see meaningful changes in CA-19-9 to for several weeks given its half-life of 15 to 33 days. Don't be discouraged if levels don't drop immediately give treatment time to work and follow your oncologist's monitoring schedule. CA-19-9 to is a valuable monitoring tool when used correctly but it's not a cancer screening test and has important genetic limitations. Your next step, discuss with your oncologist how CA-19-9 to fits into your specific monitoring plan and what changes would be clinically significant. This information is for education. Always discuss your individual situation with your healthcare provider. I've outlined several reputable resources here, which you may find valuable for further information on CA-19-9 to and pancreatic cancer. All links are available in the description below. Thank you for watching.